David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. For the last few years, I have been fortunate enough to be able to get a close-up look at a very special annual release, and that would be the Graf von Faber-Castell Pen of the Year. Uh, there is always a lot to talk about with these pens. They are chock full of meaning and symbolism. And a lot of thought goes into this annual limited edition release, and it shows in the end result. Uh, two years ago, I showed you the Sparta. That pen was infamous for having abs on the section. Then last year, there was the Knights, which bore a resemblance to a sword. The company has been doing these editions since 2003, so this year's edition is their 19th. Um, I'm wondering what special thing they have in store for next year when it is their 20th anniversary of the series. I look forward to finding out. But let's take a look at what they came up with this year, which is a pen they are calling Aztecs. It's a pen inspired by the culture, aesthetics, and religious rites of the Aztecs, which is a cultural empire which was created back in the year 1428 in where we know now as Mexico. So what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this unique pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show you some measurements and some size comparisons. Thanks go out to Graf von Faber-Castell for providing this pen on loan for review. Now, I won't be doing a writing sample in this review. Uh, when it comes to very high-end pens on loan, uh, there are times when inking or even uh, dipping them is not an option. In those cases, uh, I feel the opportunity to get an in-depth look at a pen which uh, will not have that many reviews available of it outweighs the lack of a writing sample. Now, I'm going to talk a bit more about the packaging than I typically do. Uh, Graf von Faber-Castell does an outstanding job of making you feel like you have made a purchase of significance with this pen. Uh, the pen arrives in this very large box. Now, this box is huge, and there is just one pen in here. Now, when you open it up, inside there is a second box. When you open up that second box, everything is efficiently and safely packaged. Uh, but I thought it was interesting that the pen doesn't arrive in the actual box. Uh, the pen is in the smaller box there on the left. There is a lot of attention to detail here. The inside of the box for this case is lined in felt in order to protect the piano lacquered finish. Uh, it has a little flap in the front of the outer box which makes it easier to remove the actual box. It is nicely adorned with the Graf von Faber-Castell name. Uh, this is what it looks like opened up with the pen inside. The front part there has a piece of protective plastic on it that I left on. Uh, the top level has a single slot for the pen as well as some themed artwork. But underneath is something I really appreciate. Uh, you remove the top tray and underneath there is a nice lower tray which holds six pens. Uh, so many times manufacturers have these large boxes which are only designed to hold a single pen. Um, it's nice that you can actually use this for more than just one pen. Uh, under that tray are a few things. Uh, there is this very nice manual which looks really nice and goes into the cultural history of the Aztecs and the aspects of their culture which served as inspirations for this pen. Uh, there is a certificate of authenticity. There is a use and care guide for this pen with some warranty information. Uh, and then there's also something cool. Uh, with the purchase of this pen, once you register it with Graf von Faber-Castell, they offer a complimentary annual service where you send them your pen and they will clean it and service it at no charge to you. Uh, the work takes around two weeks, which isn't a bad turnaround. And if you're going to be investing in this pen, the annual maintenance by the manufacturer is a pretty good idea. Okay, that is a lot of information and we really haven't even gotten to the pen yet, which is right here. Uh, it comes in this very nice cloth sleeve. And here is the Graf von Faber-Castell pen of the year for 2022, the Aztecs. Uh, this pen is made from metal and has an anthracite gray DLC coating. Uh, DLC stands for diamond light -like carbon. It provides a strong, high-gloss finish uh, that I don't find to be too, of too much of a fingerprint magnet. It almost has a gunmetal look to it. Um, still, it would have been nice to include a polishing gloss with this pen. Um, let's take a closer look at the cap. Uh, it's adorned with an eagle engraved in turquoise. The cap is octagonal with concave facets, meant to resemble the shape of a prickly pear cactus. Uh, the Aztec god of war, whose name I am not even going to attempt to pronounce, uh, decreed that the Aztecs should seek a new home in a place where an eagle sits on a cactus devouring a snake. 
After 200 years of exploration, they spotted the prophesized image at a place called Lake Texcoco, and that's where they settled. Now, that place has a name that you are most likely familiar with. That would be Mexico City, one of the largest cities in the world. I like the concave facets on the cap. It gives it a bit of a different look. Then we have the clip. It is a traditional shape for Graf von Faber-Castell. Uh, it is hinged. If you press on the back of the clip, the front raises to ease in its use. But in practice, I find that the uh, clip works well in materials of varying sizes without the need of manual assistance. But it's still fun to play with. Uh, at the end of the cap, there is a band. On it, it says Graf von Faber-Castell. And on the back side, it says Handmade in Germany. Uh, the engraving on this band is very high quality. Uh, at the end of the cap, there is a medium-sized rounded step down to the barrel. Uh, as you've seen a glimpse of it in some of these pictures, the barrel is adorned with 132 skulls. I counted them. Well, I did the math. There are 11 columns of 12 skulls each. Uh, this barrel is a representation of a skull rack, which was common for Aztec temples. Uh, here's a diagram of a skull rack from a 16th century Aztec manuscript. Uh, some of these racks were constructed with real human skulls. Uh, this was to honor the gods whom the victims were sacrificed to, as well as uh, showing the military might and power of the empire. Uh, there were other racks which were more symbolic, like this one found in uh, Templo Mayor in Mexico City. Uh, here's another example of a rack. Uh, this one is preserved in a Mexican museum. I thought it was interesting that even on the carved skulls, there was variation between them. Now, in a perfect world, there'd be minor variations between each of the skulls on this barrel, but I can understand the uh, additional complexity that might have brought to the overall construction of this pen. Uh, the raised skulls on the barrel actually add an interesting textural element to the pen. The barrel is straight until you get to a small step down to what appears to be a piston knob, but it's not. But more about that here in a second. And then at the end of the barrel, it is inlaid with another turquoise engraving, this one being of their god of the dead. Uh, this image portrays him as a skull wearing a headdress adorned with owl feathers. Uh, Aztecs considered skeletons to be symbols of fertility and health and excess. Decorated skulls still play a key role in Mexican culture today, uh, especially during times like the Day of the Dead celebrations. Um, I mentioned here at the end that it is not a piston knob, it is actually a blind cap. It twists off and underneath there is a piston knob. Uh, the company describes this as a plunger type filling system, uh, but it's a piston. Uh, the piston is very smooth. It has a uh, really nice ratcheting system so that you don't over tighten the piston. Uh, it's a really satisfying sound and you can really feel that the internal mechanism is made from quality materials. On the end of the piston knob, it is engraved with Pen of the Year 2022, and the limited edition number of this pen, uh, as you can see, it is a limited edition of 375 units. The cap twists off in a single rotation, and underneath we have this 18 karat ruthenium coated nib. Uh, they describe this nib as being magnum sized, but essentially it's the same size as a standard number six nib. I'm not sure that I would ever describe a number six nib as magnum sized. Uh, but I have always felt that the imprint on the Graf von Faber-Castell pens looks very classy. On this one, it's stamped also with pen of the year. It is available in fine, medium, broad, and double broad. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section is made from obsidian, which is the material Aztecs used for swords and spearheads and arrowheads. Uh, as you might already know, obsidian is created when water flows over lava. Um, it's useful material, which could also be used to create nether portals, beacons, as well as enchanting tables. The section angles up very slightly until you reach a modest translucent ink window. Then there are the metal threads and a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Um, while I care for the overall thickness of this section, I do find it to be a bit on the slick side. With the overall weight of this pen being significant, I would have cared for the section to have maybe more of a matte finish or something along those lines, which would provide you with a bit more grip control. Um, I don't find my grip resting on the metal threads at all, but if you tend to grip your pens further back and you do come in contact with the threads, I don't find them to be sharp or uncomfortable. The cap kind of posts. It sits on the end, but it doesn't post very deeply or securely. 
with this pen being fairly heavy and the cap being very heavy, even if you could post the cap, it would not be advisable to do so. Um, I do like the overall weight and balance of this pen. It feels fantastic in the hand, other than the, the section. I just wish it was a little less slick. But overall, the pen just feels very solid. It feels like a quality pen, which is good because this is also a fairly expensive pen. The Graffon Faber-Castell Pen of the Year Aztecs is available through many different retailers and sells for $6,400. Uh, it's also available in a roller bar version, which sells for $6,000. Now, when you are considering a pen in this price range, I have said this many times, you are not just buying a pen. Yes, you are paying for the physical materials, but it, it's like art. Placing a value of things of this nature can be somewhat subjective. Uh, it's worth what people will pay for this kind of unique creation. Um, having had the opportunity to spend time with a number of pens in this price range, uh, this pen feels comparable. Um, it's a, a pen for a very limited market. While there are few people out there who are looking to spend this much on a pen, uh, they are indeed out there. And these pens will inevitably sell out. So there is a healthy market for pens in this price range that does exist. Um, overall, I like that this pen has a theme, but it's not too ostentatious. And I feel that through a, a multitude of elements, it appropriately pays tribute to the Aztec traditions and cultures uh, without feeling exploitative. Uh, thanks go out to, again to Graf von Faber-Castell for providing this pen on loan for review. Now it is time for some measurements and some size comparisons. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Graf von Faber-Castell Pen of the Year Aztecs. I wanted to give you another little look at the uh, detail in here. This is some really nice, interesting turquoise work. There is the uh, turquoise work on the back and the skulls here on the barrel. Um, it's just very interesting. I like the, uh, the cactus shape on this uh, cap as well. I just think that that's really unique. But in regard to some size comparisons, um, here it is with a Mont Blanc Hitchcock. And here it is with a Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear Sky. Uh, and here it is with a Classic Pens LB5. And then in regard to some other pens, here it is with a uh, Pilot Custom Arushi. And here it is with a Conid Bulk Filler King Size. And then finally, here it is with a Namiki Yukari Royale. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the Classic Pens LB5. The... Namiki Yukari Royale, and here it is with the Pilot Custom Arushi. So there you have the Graffon Faber-Castell Pen of the Year Aztecs. Um, I think that they do a very good job of making these annual releases special, which uh, is something that I appreciate. And I think that this is a good addition to that lineup. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you later.